kind of a fitting night that uh, Ed and Vinny both get inducted onto the same night. These two have been teammates for years on the Pro Stocks. So uh, it's kind of a celebration for both families here at the same time. Our first inductee will start off with Mr. St. Angelo here. We'll go young to old. Is that okay with you, Ed? Ed St. Angelo grew up in the car business and eventually opened up his own dealership with his brother, John. Like many that grew up around cars, they eventually found themselves competing here weekly at Seekonk Speedway. It was 1974 when Ed first tasted victory driving in the late model division. That year he won two races. But soon after, the open wheel modifieds called his name and when his, with his famous orange number 19, he soon found victory lane again. It's a place he would find over 25 times in his career. Not only competing here at Seekonk, he traveled throughout New England honing his skills. Those skills would come into play in 1983, which turned out to be his most successful season. It was the year that the SK Modifieds found Seekonk home, and he went on to dominate the division, winning eight times that year on his way to his only championship. That same year, the Modifieds came to town for three events, and Ed picked up a win in the 150 lap event, beating the best modified drivers the Northeast had to offer. After sitting on the sidelines for a few years, he jumped behind the wheel of his second car out of the stables of Vinnie Anarumo, and over the next few years, he picked up several more victories and helped that team dominate the pro stocks for several years. Tonight, Ed becomes a permanent part of the Speedway as we induct him onto the Seekonk Speedway Wall of Fame. Ladies and gentlemen, Join me in welcoming Ed St. Angelo. Now, Ed, as I remember back, one of my favorite modifieds, except for my father's, was that Buick Skylark, the orange Skylark that you debuted back in the early 90s. It was a beautiful piece of machinery. Congratulations. Welcome to the Wall of Fame. Thank you so much. First of all, I would like to thank the Vendetti family, all generations of the Vendetti family, for allowing us to do what we love to do all these years. Uh, we always, you know, during my career, I always wondered what the last lap would be. Didn't know if we'd crash, checkered flag, black flag, maybe tour in the ambulance, back of a wrecker. Never in my wildest dreams did I ever think my last lap was in a golf cart. For a guy that doesn't even know how, which end of the golf club to hold, that was really something. But I'll make this very short, if I can, just a couple of minutes of your time. I started coming here, we sat down in the first turn back when I was seven or eight years old. And for a few years, all I would do is I'd walk down to the fence and just look into the pit area and just hope someday I'd get in there. Now, and I had a lot of racing idols that I idolized for a good many years. It was a few years later, it was when I was 12 years old and I was able to get in with a race team and start working on them. Of course, at that time, I believe you had to be 18 years old to get in the pits. I was 12, they used to sneak me in inside the car. That worked for just a little while until I started being escorted out of this track, which has happened many times later on. But anyhow, uh, that was the first time I had my, the first conversation I ever had with the godfather, Anthony Vendetti. And he explained to me why I shouldn't be in the pits. But you know, Anthony was a very, he was a people person. And at the end of our conversation, he said that, you know, if your father signed off a waiver, you know, that he wouldn't have a problem with me being in the pits at 12 years old. So we did that. So it was great that, you know, I was finally, after idolizing these guys for so many years, that I finally got to work with them. And that was a great thing for a kid that, that was his lifelong dream. As years went on, and I decided to drive, uh, those same people that I idolized helped me learn how to drive. So to be able to watch this, work with them, and then drive and r run against them, again, was a lifelong dream. So I can only thank all the fans and friends, and there's been a lot of friends that I've made over the years here, for making this night possible. It's kind of a fitting end to my career, and I, I really appreciate it. And when, when I talk about friends, there's no better friend than the one that got inducted with me today. Uh, Vinny was a friend that I made through racing, and uh, we remain friends all these years, which is not everybody can say that. Uh, but we became teammates, 
and we had some very successful years. So, again, I'd like to thank every one of you, and uh, thanks again. Bye-bye. Our second in inductee is a name that, well, everybody knows who he is. It was way back in the early 70s when the Anna Rumo name first popped up on the radar here at Seekonk. In 1972, he arrived in Victory Lane for the first time. He picked up four wins over the next few years and his first championship in 73, but fell in love with the Modifieds. Over the following decade plus, he worked at winning in the Modifieds, driving here and throughout New England, but was missing that little something, a little bit of luck. One thing he did get during that time was a nickname, and it's a nickname that stuck with him throughout his career. The heck? We'll get this thing working. For those of you who don't know how Vinny got his nickname, well, we had an open competition modified race, and he was running second, pushing the leader around the racetrack. The winner was one of the greatest modified drivers ever, Richie Evans. Well, Richie had no idea who was behind him. And when he asked the starter, who is that behind me? Well, John Hall told him, well, that's Vinny Inarumo. And not knowing how to pronounce Vinarumo, he said, Vinny who? Well, from there, a nickname was born, and everywhere he went, you knew him as Vinny who. In the late 80s, Vinny returned to Seekonk in the Pro Stock Division and started winning against a talented class of drivers. In 1990, he picked up his second career title, and from there he went on a tear in the pro stocks, picking up five more titles in 92, 93, well, four, 2004 and 2005. While he traveled to other tracks, Seekonk was always home. When the Modified Racing Series started in 2004, it caught his eye. He still had that desire to win a Modified Race. And then finally, on June 23rd in 2007, 35 years after he won his very first race, he picked up his very first modified win. He went on to win three more races with the Modified Racing Series, his last of G in June of 2008, but his biggest win came in 2007 when he won Open Wheel Wednesday and the $10,000 that went along with it. Never one to back down from a fight on the racetrack, sometimes the good guy, sometimes the bad, but we can all admit he was one of the best to compete in full fenders, and in open wheels. Join me in welcoming to the Seekonk Speedway Wall of Fame, Vinny who? Vinny Anarumo. Yeah, we'll make this short. I'm not, I'm not one for speeches. I just would like to thank all the people that worked on my race cars, all the sponsors, uh, my family, my friends, and I never had more fun than uh, when me and Eddie raced together. Uh, it was a uh, team effort. We both worked on each other's cars, and we both won. And like I said, I want to thank everybody that helped me along. Levesque Tree Service, uh, Francis Farm, Palm View, Jack's Auto Salvage, Steve's Auto Parts. Everybody that helped me is well appreciated. Thank you. Oh, I want to just say I, I wish Mrs. Vendetti was here. That was my stepmother. Thank you.